Hey, what's up everyone? Uh, my name is Dustin, as you can tell by this thing right here. Yeah, I'm not on screen. This is a... Uh, I'm just throwing this video together real quick because I have a hunch about something. So one thing, probably the most uh, most talked about or most requested... Uh, focus, there you go. So the most... Con the biggest concern I think with everyone are these rails on the FT5. Um, people have trouble with them binding up and things like that. Now, there are a few ca occasions where the rail itself is actually bad. And even if you put lubricate it and, you know, let it wear in, because they do need to wear in for, you know, a week or so. Um, but what I've noticed is uh, even after that, people, they'll be binding. You know, it'll be running fine and then it'll just kind of bind up or something like that. Phone just went off. Um, so what I found is that usually the binding is caused when this slider is twisting on the actual rail itself. If it's perfectly flat and, you know, lined up how it should be, it doesn't bind ever. And um, I've tested this, you know, with mine just by, you know, messing around with it. Um, I won't go into detail this because this is a quick video, but you can see both of these. These are both my rails. I've had these rails and sliders... Uh, since I got the printer in June, and I haven't had issue with them, with the exception of occasionally it'll bind up for some reason. Now, I know that it's not the slider, and I know it's not the uh, pulley, which um, some people have issues with too. What I think is going on, and this is the whole point of this, oh my god, focus, you frick. Close enough. So this is a concern some people have had as well, is that the uh, screws that mount this piece onto the slider are actually slightly proud of the surface so when you go to mount the 2020 onto this the 2020 is actually sitting up like basically on top of the screws so imagine if your screws are a little bit higher on this side than up here it's actually going to put the whole extrusion you know at a slight angle which if you have it tightened down with the uh, t-nuts it's going to basically pull this whole slider up out of alignment and then cause the slider to be slightly twisted and then not slide how it should. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, basically countersink these holes a little bit more than what they already are. Um, this is a uh, something that's been talked about before in manufacturing. Um, the, the fear is if we go any deeper, it might become weak. So I don't know if this is going to be fixed um, at you know the manufacturing point, basically. I don't know if it already is or if they've uh, drilled it any deeper, or uh, engraved it, I guess. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a quarter-inch drill bit and uh, basically just use it to countersink these holes a little bit more, just a little bit more, so the heads are all underneath the surface of this piece. And I think that's going to solve most of the issues that people are having. So I'm going to put this... I'm going to test this out, let you know how it goes, and then... Um, Hopefully put this video out there just in case people who are having this issue, go ahead and try this. Um, just undo, I'm going to do this where I undo a screw, countersink it just a little bit more, put the screw back in. That way I'm not, you know, messing with anything else. And um, I'm curious to see if anyone else tries this, if this helps. So, um, yeah, other than that, I don't really have much else to say. I'm Just give me a, a little bit and I'm going to um, go ahead and do this and we'll see what happens. So... I will return. So this is me ahead of time. I should add, if you screw something up because you did this, not my fault. Don't go messaging people saying, hey, I need a replacement part because I broke it. I want it for free because this guy said to do it. If you're not capable of doing things, for one, why are you doing building a printer? Um, but two, just use common sense. Don't go being crazy you don't go using your, your your big you know gigantic 15 amp drill to go through a small piece of fiber board like this or melamine you know what i'm talking about just, just don't be stupid if you break something it's not my fault it's no one else's fault but yours be careful it'll everything will be fine as long as you're careful okay okay continue so as you can see here i've done the first one Let's see if it focuses i'm too close yeah, yeah. So you can see I countersunk that first one, and it is, you know, way under the surface. Um, the only downside to what I'm doing, how I'm drilling this in place, is um, a little bit of dust and stuff gets down into the threads. I don't know if that's going to make anything, you know. I know that that's definitely not what you should do, 
but when do I ever listen to uh, how you should do things? So, um, yeah, I don't recommend that, but, you know. And you have to be really careful because um, because there's already a hole. You're basically just boring out what's on. Uh, you're making a hole bigger. Because I'm using a drill bit and not a countersink bit, it will very easily grab on and just pull the drill bit through. And um, if you're not careful, you'll go all the way through the piece. So if you actually go to do this, be really careful. Um, so I'm going to go and do the rest of these and the other piece over there. And... Uh, We'll see what happens. Be right back. So I forgot that I'm not a complete idiot, and um, I've done stuff like this before when it comes to making holes bigger in a sensitive material like this or plexiglass. When you go to drill the hole, just run your drill in reverse, and this is just melamine, so it will, you know, still drill down. It's but you're because you're drilling in reverse, you're not grabbing on to the thing and it's trying it's not going to pull it through and you know, i know i'm talking and it's nonsense just when you go if you're going to widen these holes if you're going to do it in place or whatever just run the drill in reverse and just push down a little bit and it goes a lot slower so you're not going to just go flying through the piece and break it and um, you're also probably going to not split it either because if you go to drill this out and you split the piece then you're shit out of luck so yeah just run the drill bit in reverse it's soft material so it'll go right through or it'll drill it out correctly without damaging anything, basically. So I forgot that I could do that. I used to do that all the time in plexiglass when I'd make holes bigger in plexi. Um, and I was like, oh, wait, I can do it here. Works out really well. Yeah. All righty. So I got the first set done. Um, holy crap. Yeah, so I got uh, the first set of them done. Um, I also did do this fifth screw right here. Um, I don't know if you'll need to do this one or not, but I did... Um, I used, I, I, I countersunk this one and I did have to use a smaller screw because the screw that I was using um, was already almost bottoming out down in there-ish. Oh, God. Anyway, um, so it was a 16 millimeter screw, I think, that was in there. And I had to go down to a 12 or a 10 or something like that. But other than that, um, that I didn't have to do anything else. So, oh my God, the focus. Son of a bitch. Um... So I'm going to do the other side now, and uh, yeah. Um, what I also noticed is the uh, running the drill bit in reverse creates a lot finer dust, so it's a lot easier to clean out, um, you know, just blowing out the holes. It's a lot easier to do that than uh, when you were drilling in. It would create a lot of bigger pieces that were harder to get out, but this uh, running in reverse just creates really, really fine sawdust. You can just go, and it's gone, so yay! Well, I have finished. It's also, like, the next day, but um, I have finished doing the nonsense and uh, I've countersunk all the holes, tightened everything up nice and well. And I will say one thing that I noticed before I did this was the, um, the mounting screws, the two that are on the ends in here to mount the actual 2020 to the bot, to the, uh, panel thing. Um, I couldn't tighten down. I think it was this one, like this one and the other one on the end. And, uh, once I, if I would tighten it all the way down, it would, um, make it to where I couldn't move the whole rail at all. Um, and that's what I was thinking. I was contributing to the whole, you know, these, because these were raised up, it would cause this whole slider to twist and all that nonsense. So now I'm able to fully tighten everything down, which I like that makes everything a little bit more sturdy. So that makes me feel a little bit better. So, um, for those of you who have tightened everything down and it's not moving really well, then, you know, there you go. That's probably what it is. So, uh, let's give this a voyage. Nice and smooth. Like, I don't feel any sort of issues. It feels nice and sexy. Oh, ho, ho, ho. And by the way, in case you were looking, first look at the CNC attachment. <laughs> I don't want to give you too much of uh, too much of that because it's still a secret. Well, it's not a secret. You guys know about it. But yeah, I've been doing some routing today. Um, here, you want to see a sneak peek? Focus. That was, good job, Focus. Yeah, I, uh, I, I, I engraved that with the CNC thing. So uh, more videos to come on that, but I just wanted to make this little video to show you guys that, uh, you know, you can countersink those holes just slightly. You don't have to go very, very uh, deep in. You can just do it. Just, you know, just sink it down another, you know, like eighth of an inch or maybe a millimeter or uh, maybe two millimeters or so. Um, and, uh, that should be more than enough to, uh, sink those heads in there. Um, but otherwise that does really help. And, um, of course, once you get that on there, make sure that your, um, bar is, uh, parallel to 
the frame, you know, make sure that the uh, the sliders are in the same spot so it's not all wonky and all that nonsense. But um, And make sure, of course, if you have a printer, make sure you lubricate and clean the, the rails. Um, you need to maintenance this printer. You have to lubricate these rails every so often. I just use PTFE oil. Um, the bearings that are in these holes for the slider or the, uh, you know, what the hell I'm talking about, the, those things, um, lubricate those. There's one up here on the X. Um, just put a drop of oil in there just to, you know, keep the bearings all good and all that nonsense. So other than that, um, go ahead and try this if you, it's all good. So yeah, other than that, I don't really have much else to say. Um, let me know if this helps you. If it doesn't, then I'm sorry. I, I'm a failure. You can, you can unsubscribe. I'm sorry. But, um, if it did help, cool. Thank you. Thank you for the support. Thank you for all the likes um, that helps get the video out there. Comments, if you guys comment. Um, subscribers, you guys are awesome. Um, more videos to come about this nonsense. Don't you love my professionalism being everything out of focus? Oh, God. Um, anyway, not much else to say. Thank you for watching. Uh, until the next video, I will see y'all later.